Hi there. Uh, I heard somebody called for the doctor. Uh, there's a possible case or outbreak of polyitis. I came as soon as I could. I'm Dr. Arguez. Polyitis is one of my specialties, so I hope I'll be able to help. Let's get right to it. Go over the symptoms that you're probably manifesting and, and see what we can do for you. The primary symptoms of polyitis manifest themselves generally in the following order. Let's see how many you have so we know how serious it is. Um, the first thing that happens to you when you develop polyitis is that you find foreign language learning, which most e people experience as being boring or frustrating or a waste of time. Uh, you find it to be a positive experience. It's fun and interesting. You're good at it. You usually like it for one language you're learning and you become interested in, in learning others. It's something you enjoy doing and, and you're good at it. And so you go from learning one language to thinking about learning lots of languages. And this can take root in your soul in so many different ways. Um, some people uh, start to think, you know, the large languages of the world, Chinese and Hindi and English and Spanish, there's only a handful of them. If it's possible, I could learn to speak with most of the people who are alive. Or some people say, I, I like to learn all the languages of a language family. I want to learn all the Slavic languages. And, some people say, I don't want to learn all the languages of one family. I'd like to learn one language from every different language family, one language of all the different kinds of languages there are. Some people want to learn languages geographically. You say, gosh, if I could walk through all of Africa or Asia and speak to everybody, that would be wonderful. Some people are afflicted, are afflicted, afflicted with polyliteracy, and, and they want to have a diachronic aspect of their learning. So they say, I'd like to know how languages develop. I don't. I want to know how all the forms of, of German, from Old High German to Middle High German to Modern German, and how they're related to other Germanic languages. I, I would like to learn to read all of the literary languages of antiquity. I want to learn to read Latin and Ancient Greek and Sanskrit and Ancient Egyptian and be able to read everything that was written 3,000 or 5,000 years ago. There's, there's so many ways that this can take hold of you, but the, you become captivated by the idea of learning many languages, poly. And uh, from there, when you think about that, you're not thinking, I'm going to stay in school and take classes my whole life. You're also really inspired by the fact that poly Itis, polyliteracy, polyglottery are inherently autodidactic endeavors. You teach yourself. You have to take control of the learning process. And that's an exciting thing to do, to say, I am going to take control of my own lifelong learning. My whole life long, I'm going to keep adding new knowledge, new skills, new ability, increase my understanding. I'm going to increase my abilities. I'm going to develop my mind. I'm going to develop myself by my own endeavors. That, that self-teaching, uh, continued lifelong learning, continued taking charge of your own uh, developmental process is an exciting aspect of polyitis as well. So uh, you have these symptoms, and the next one that develops is if you go from saying these are good ideas to saying looking for inspiration, looking for people who are doing this. So you probably spend a lot of time here on YouTube watching uh, videos by various polyglots, uh, finding different personalities that appeal to you, and they will share their secrets and their tips and their hints and their methods, and you can learn from them how they do it and the feeling if they can do it, I can do it. That kind of inspiration is important. You probably spend time on um, various forums and other places where people are talking about ways that you can learn and things that you can do to learn as well. And, and while you're online, you're probably also looking for resources and you're uh, finding places where people have put up audio files and, and text files and digitized books and the like. And you probably realize that what's here today might not be there tomorrow. And so you're starting to download these things and make a collection for yourself of stuff that you might get to someday, and hopefully you will, but uh, you realize you're not going to get to all of it, but you better get a copy of it now while you can because it might not be there in the future. And then you're probably going to realize that some things are never going to be available online. You have to spend your money on this. You have to start getting a physical collection as well. So you start spending money ordering books and audio materials and audio books and things that you can use for the whole language learning endeavor. Um, and you develop a, a large physical collection of these things as well. And when you have a collection of materials to study and knowledge of methods and a plan of languages as you want to learn, um, you probably spend a fair amount of time saying to yourself, well, I, 
I know I want to learn 12 languages and I'd like to do it over the next six years. So maybe that's two languages a year. Or do I do them all at once? And I've got all these different methods. Um, should I use these methods first or that? And I've got four hours a day. I can divide them up this way. Um, so you'll get an Excel file or a big piece of paper and you'll develop some sort of plan, a scheme, a schedule for studying when you're going to start, how you're going to start, what you're going to do first, how you're going to do it. Um, you draw up plans and schemes for doing these things. This is the general developmental stages of, of polyitis. And how many of these do you have? If this sounds like you, if you have all of them, you've definitely got polyitis. If you have the first couple, you can expect the, the others to develop as well. Um, polyitis, good news, it's, it's, not, it's not a terminal condition. It's, it's something you can live with, um, and it's something you're probably going to have to live with. For the most part, polyitis is something that is um, permanent. Uh, some people go through it as a stage. Some people just spend a little bit of time with it and then outgrow it. But for most people, if you develop these symptoms, they're going to stick with you for the rest of your life. So for some people, a happy few, um, you can just channel or manage your polyitis on your own. Uh, and channeled or managed polyitis is the best we can hope for for those symptoms because those symptoms in and of themselves are not negative. Those symptoms, if you act on them, if you take action on those primary symptoms, there's nothing wrong with them. They can be an inspiration. You can cultivate them as a driving force to get done what you say you want to do. If you're actually turning yourself into a polyliterate polyglot, then you're doing what you want. That's a good thing. So if you're getting results, if you are using them in an effective and an efficient way, if you're able to implement them, um, then that's the best we can hope for. And as I said, some people are able to do this on their own, but for everyone who is able to do this on his own, um, there are many more people who are not. And when I say on his own, um, I use the male pronoun because although poly itis uh, is not rare or at all rare or unheard of in women. It's, it's more common in men. So for everybody who is able to do this on his own, many more people unfortunately experience these secondary negative symptoms of polyitis. And this is why the doctor was called for today. This is why we need a cure. This is why we need a treatment. This is what we need to do something. These secondary negative symptoms of polyitis are not something that we want to have to begin with and not something we want to keep if we do have them. The main one is procrastination. There's always a better method to get. There's always a better time to get started. There's always a better material that you've ordered and you're waiting to get started. There's always something that you need to get done to make sure that you have the right material which you need. Procrastination always has a justification, but uh, it's procrastination nonetheless. And procrastination leads to just a sense of frustration at your inability to follow through. You've told yourself you're going to get started, you've made your schedule, and you don't do it. And that goes beyond frustration frequently to very harsh blame, self-blame, self-recrimination, lambasting yourself really putting yourself down and feeling bad that you're unable to do what you told yourself, what you promised yourself that you were going to do. This is not good for your self-esteem, not good for your soul in any way, shape, or form. Even if it doesn't go that far, you'll just experience a sense of unfulfillment, chronic unfulfillment. This is something I want to do. It's something important to me. It's something I'm, I'm saying that I want to do, and yet I'm not, I'm not getting around to it. I'm not doing as much as I want to do. I say I want to do a lot, and I'm just doing a little or none. And that's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. If you never get to it, if you don't do it, you're spending your time, which you could be engaged in some other pursuit. You're spending all your time saying you're doing something you're never going to get to. And if it is something that you're going to get to, and that's your plan and your hope, and eventually you will, this is a lifelong project. You need to get started. You need to get cracking now. The longer you delay, the less you're ever going to be able to get done. So um, that waste of time is, uh, is not a good thing as well. So... <clears throat> There is a treatment, there's a procedure for treating these negative symptoms. It's not easy, it's a long-term treatment. However, there's no option. If you have these negative symptoms, this is what you need to do. The first prerequisite is you need to spend some time 
some introspective time uh, looking at time management. If you don't know how to sort of track your hours throughout a couple of days and look at what you're doing and what you can cut out or what you can substitute or what you can do more efficiently, um, I recommend that you get some information from Brian Tracy. He's the real expert in, in this. He's written many books, audio books and, and, and written books about ways to look into your use of time and, and find ways to get something. What you need to do is you need to get, block out and reserve 60 minutes a day for this treatment. There are some people for whom this is not possible. If, for instance, if, you, if you're a single parent working um, a, a demanding job to provide for your child and also trying to get some sort of further education or training to get a better job, you might not have 60 seconds a day. But for most people who manifest symptoms of something like polyotis, it's, it's pretty high on Maslow's hierarchy period of a, a pyramid of self-actualization. This is stuff where you probably have, uh, if you look, you examine your life and you look at the way you currently use your time, you could probably cut some things out or do other things in a much more uh, efficient, compact fashion or, or combine things or work things in. So you need to block out and reserve 60 minutes a day for this treatment and you need to do this for six months for 180 days. You need to make a commitment to do this every single day for an hour a day for six months. The call was put out for the doctor in December of 2021. I would recommend that we start this treatment January 1st as a New Year's commitment. It's always good to get a new beginning and do something there. So for the first six months of 2022, if you have negative symptoms, try this treatment and let's see if we can not get rid of these negative symptoms and turn it into positive channeled managed polyitis. Ideally, we want to do this the same way in the old days when you had consumption and you would go to a spa or, a, 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 or something, a treatment place, you would have a community. So you want to have a, what I call a compassionate and competitive community of people who are also doing this. You're not, if you have negative symptoms of polyitis, you're not alone. Many other people have this as well. So if we can get a group of people to all try to treat this together at the same time, that would be ideal. You form a community, um, you would be mutually supportive uh, in, in this, compassionate, and as I said, this is uh, primarily a male affliction. Men, we, when we're doing sports, we watch other people and we're not really competing against them, trying to beat them or win, but we say, well, if he can do it, I can do it. You get inspiration from watching other people succeed and, and that challenges you to, to try harder. So that, that sense of good competition uh, from a community. It's also helpful, uh, just a simple fact, that if you make some sort of a financial commitment, uh, if you make some sort of uh, contribution to an endeavor, um, you're more likely to follow through with it than if you get it for nothing. So if you can look at that as, as a consequence. Uh, you're, you're contributing to the cause, and even if you drop out, you're not going to get that money back. You are, um, you're sacrificing that, but if you stay with it, you are, you're, you're contributing to it, and this is more likely to make you carry through and do something. So the actual prescription, what you need uh, to solve these, uh, cure these negative symptoms, is I want you to take, following dose, I want you to take twice a day, uh, 15 minutes each of French and of German. 15 minutes of French and 15 minutes of German in the morning and 15 minutes of French and 15 minutes of German in the evening. Ideally, at 12-hour intervals, try to space them out. Um, ideally, you want to obtain these medicines from the same pharmacy so that the mixture, the dosage, the ingredients will be the same. There are a lot of courses out there that are on a blueprint so that the actual instruction is really on parallel lines. It's the same storyline, it's the same content, but just for a different language. So if you get that, that kind of balanced dosage, um, that would be ideal. There might be some counterindications here. You might be allergic to or immune to one or both of these languages. So you might know it already, or you might have some other uh, issues with it. In that case, it is possible um, that if we can find a different balance of easily digested uh, materials that would provide the same degree of difference and overview of, of being 
two different languages that you're teaching yourself at the same time that will give you a solid foundation and what you need to do further. Uh, for instance, we could substitute Spanish for French and or Russian for German. The possible expected results of this treatment, there are three of them. The first one is, unfortunately and sadly, as with any human endeavor, um, more people, a lot of people tend to fail when they set out to do something. They don't carry through with it, even though they start with the best of intentions. So, but if you make a real effort, if instead of just making plans and not doing anything, but you make a real effort and it doesn't work out, that might cure you. You might say, you know, I thought this was interesting, but it's really not. That's why I didn't continue. Um, this is not for me. I thought it was. I was enamored of it. It seemed like a good thing, but this is really not for me. And then you can get on with your life and do something else. You might get a cure through success. You might just get rid of that poly side of it. You might get some good foundation in French and German and then say, you know, uh, that's enough. I, I'm, I'm more interested in, in history or, or, or chemistry or some other academic endeavor that now I have a foundation to do research in, or I'm now got that I can do something else with my life. Uh, I can be a polymath and do many other things. I can go do some art endeavor. I can do something else. So you might be cured of that poly side of it and be able to get on with your life and not have this sort of constant negative sensation of you're not doing something you want to do. Ideally, though, I think the best possible result for most people who actually manifest these symptoms is that you'll learn how to challenge, channel or manage your polyitis. You'll channel it through success. You will learn how to manage your polyitis the same way, as I said, a few people are able to do this without, um, without issue, do it on their own. Uh, if you go through this treatment, though, you should be able to do that as well. Um, by learning two foundational languages, uh, that provide uh, access to many, many other resources, um, you've developed an atomic habit. It's not small to learn two languages, but if your goal is to learn many, many languages, it's obviously just the beginning. It's a foundation, and by getting started, you might not be able to realize all of your goals, but it's the start of a practice. You've got motion, you're rolling now, and polyitis, polyliteracy, polyglottery is something you have to manage. It's a practice. It's not just something you have or do. It's a lifestyle of management for doing this. So I hope that this information is what you need to embark upon this treatment. Uh, I hope the prescription is clear. If you have these negative symptoms, if this is a way that you can get rid of them, I hope this is all the information you need. But if you need a further consultation or more information, you know where to find me. Good luck.